Isaiah chapter 13. 13th book of the Bible would be 1st Chronicles. Again, we're on the second advent. The burden. Now, there are, throughout the Bible, there are burdens written to people, nations, including Israel and Judah. And there's many definitions. But a burden is not, I can, as I have seen, has ever been written to someone who is doing right. And to get burden, they are written here to Babylon and others, is to realize a heavy load weight is when you are not doing what God wants you to do. When you are rebelling against God, it will become a burden in your life. The burden of Babylon, when Isaiah the son of Amos did see, lift ye up a banner, flag, upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the nobles. You know, those nobles are higher people. I have commanded my sanctified ones to be Israel. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger. God speaking. You know, the God of love also has anger. <coughs> oh, this cough. Even them that rejoice in my highness. There are people that, you know, that rejoice in God, but the noise of the multitude in the mountains gathering people, like as of great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together, the Lord of hosts, mustereth the no hosts of the battle, Joel chapter 2. You know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not make war. Here God is gathering nations together for a battle. When you read the book of uh, Joshua, there were nations set up by God to fight the Israelites for victory for Israel to get the land. God does promote war and battles against those who have done wrong. He told Israel to go in the land and utterly wipe out, utterly destroy. Why? Because the people and inhabitants of the land were in wickedness. They were beyond God's help. God sends Babylon to come in and to, to take care of Judah. Why? Because Judah <coughs> and Jerusalem were in wickedness. God uses war as a, uh, as a rod, as a correcting as a father would bend a child over his knee and spank the, the, the buttocks. That's what God does. That's, God, how, that's one of the uses God uses with war. Again, you look at the three things of life. Every three things has a, has a source. It's either God, it's Satan, or it's man. And you've got to come to realize that when you get a Catholic church and you know, says, we're in the power of God. No, you're not in the power of God. You're not fighting God's, uh, uh, you're not fighting for God when you're killing God's people. You are fighting for man a religion. So you can have conquest. God will use battle for those who are, who are just too much out of control, who are not listening. Or, hey, listen up, prepare. They come from a far country. And it's funny because that far country is, is one of the stories of Jesus. There was a man who, who did something and went to a far country. From the end of the heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Well, what do you do when the Bible says, from God's lips, thou shalt not kill? What do you do? David, a man after my own heart, and he goes about killing people. What do you do? 
When you don't study the Bible and you don't know what the Bible says, and then you go quoting stupid things out of context, then to the lost people, you make the Bible a lie. Thou shalt not kill is a content of a man versus a man and not nations against nations. Even with Solomon, with Joab, Joab is, is holding horns of the holding on to the horns of, uh, in, in the temple. Solomon goes and kill go kill him. Thou shalt not kill. His jo Joab was a murderer. And the law says the murderer shall die. God sanctions wars. God sanctions battles as judgment. But see, today they want this loving God that won't. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Uh oh. You read what Hosea says? Go on to you to desire the day of the Lord. <coughs> it's a day of darkness rather than light. It's a day when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. When the sun, the, when the sun is turned off, the stars don't give light. And here comes that ton, Here comes at the end of the tunnel. Here comes a light, a sword, an angry Jesus. And men are hiding themselves and throwing their gods to the bats and to the mold. It shall come as a destruction, that sword out of his mouth, from the Almighty. Now, what do you do with that one, Mr. Jehovah Witness? The King of the Kings and the Lord of the Lords is the Almighty. End of discussion. You're liars. Shut up and go to hell that you don't believe it. Just shut up. Because you've violated the scriptures. I bet you your Bible, the, the New World, I'm not looking for a New World. I'm looking for New Jerusalem. So take your new world and throw it in the, in the depths of hell where you're going that you don't believe. I bet you it changes these verses to match their teaching. But that second coming, uh, what we're reading in this chapter is the Almighty. Jesus Christ is the Almighty. And we're going to be following him on horseback too. Joel chapter 2. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is the Almighty, plain and simple. We are following God, the blessed hope and the glorious spirit of our great God and Savior. We read that in chapter 12. You don't need to worry about the Jehovah Witnesses. They're just liars. They can't read English. I can. Therefore shall all hands be faint. He said, what about those who are Israelites in Salopetra? Their hands are already faint. They're living, the, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, getting their food by the perils of death. And here comes their Messiah the second time. You're going to be, they're going to be shaking in their boots like, oh boy. We have sinned. And there's nothing but righteous judgment and that Messiah coming on horseback to kill us all. That's what we're worthy of. And yet he comes back to give them mercy and to give them grace. And give them victory over the Antichrist and all the nations been against them. Their hands are going to be faint in the beginning. All men that take their, their, their gods of silver and all that and cast them in, they're going to be faint. They're hiding from the Almighty. Every man's heart shall melt that moment when Jesus comes. Jesus is the reason for the season. No! Not if you're on the wrong side. Do you realize that the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, those that are in front of Jesus are in trouble? Yet, but those that are behind Jesus are safe and secure? We're behind Jesus. The world is in front. Only those raiments of the Jews are safe. 
And where are they safe? They are safe in the cleft of the rock city. Go see Moses. When, when Moses says, Lord, I want to see you. He says, you can't see me or you'll die. No man can see my face. Everyone that sees the face of Jesus will die. He says, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I, with my hand, I will hide you as I pass by. Well, look at that. What happens to Moses will happen to Israel, as they are in a cleft of a rock city. As the Israelites see the Gentiles, the dead dogs, on horseback behind their Messiah, that Paul says, you know what? We are saved today as an obstacle, as a stumbling stone to the nation of Israel. Yet we're to pray for it. We're, we're to seek the peace in Jerusalem. Nothing more than be vile for a, a, a Jew to have his Messiah and a bunch of dead dogs following him. Gentile nations that are saved. You, you, where are you getting this from? What did Jesus say about that woman that was, that was a Gentile? Who wanted her daughter to the evil spirit be out of her. Get that dog out of here. Put one and one again and realize what he was calling her. They shall be afraid. Oh. Me, my lovely Jesus. My sweet Jesus. Coming around the bend. My eyes have seen the glory of the. No! He didn't lift you out of cotton fields to give you welfare. When Jesus Christ comes back the second time, they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman travaileth. <coughs> That's you. Forgive me. I've been sick. Of all great pains that God can put in his holy scriptures, he likens it to the pain of birth. Without medicine, without being given uh, a shot of pain relief. In the Old Testament days, before hospitalization. That's what the time of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back, the second advent to man who has rebelled against God all the way. They shall be, I think that's the missing letter there, be amazed one at another. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Where's that light coming from? The sun has gone out, the stars quit. Their faces shall be as. Well, come on. Scripture with Scripture. Look at that word. A flaming sword comes out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another place says in, in the prophets that their faces are just going to burn up in their eye sockets. Consumed. First Thessalonians chapter 5. This is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. A penalty in judgment against those who have rejected him. He's not coming back as that little baby again. Oh, pretty baby. He's not coming back as that lamb. Sacrifice. He's coming back as a devouring lion. Sharp teeth. The king of the beasts. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. You know, there are Christians out there waiting for the day of the Lord. They think it's the rapture, and it's not because they don't know how to read their Bible. They don't know how to get a proper preacher in the pulpit. I'm not waiting for the day of the Lord. I'm waiting for the rapture. Cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate. What land? Israel. Why? Because the Antichrist is sitting over there. Satan is sitting over there. In fierce anger to lay the land desolate, 
<coughs> this is the land that God said, this is your land. This is where my eyes are upon the land. Don't you ever sell this land because it's my land. The destruction of Jerusalem ain't, ain't over yet. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Second advent is war, judgment, fire, death, pain, sorrow, and I don't know who that is who's coming. They've been thinking the Antichrist. They've been thinking Satan is God. He's been doing his Pentecostal wonders of fire coming down and, and coming back to life. Ooh, I thought that was the, the, the Star Wars God that we all, the power of the forces and all that other junk. The magic of, of, of all these magic TV and books and movies that are in the Christian churches. Ooh, look at the magic. I saw it in my church, so it must be somebody important. And yet when you read the magicians in the book of Exodus, which is going to happen, you know what the magicians did? They turned Pharaoh's heart away. All the magicians did was incur more destruction upon Egypt, the world. That's all they did. Here's blood in the water. All right, what are you guys going to do? We're going to make more. Thank you very much. So the people are left digging around looking for oh, Wait a minute, blood to turn to water. Guess what's just going to happen in the tribulation period? Guess who shows up in the tribulation period? Moses. Dealing with who? Magicians. You know what's going to happen. Sinners. For the stars of heaven... And the constellations, Leo, Orion, Sagittarius, Virgo, and you know the other constellations, thereof shall not give their light. All right, that's the stars. The stars, okay. Stars are used for navigation. <coughs> The sun shall be darkened in his going forth. The sun's going to still sunrise, sunset. Only problem is, it's not going to give its light. That's not it. And the moon shall not cause her light to shine. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes, there are no natural light. Now, can you imagine that darkness? Where do you see that in the Bible? Exodus. And who had the light? God's people. We'll have the light of the Lord Jesus Christ as we come back. But they're not going to... What's that light coming? What's that... Is that a train? No. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Woohoo! And he's angry. And every man will be on his track. You ain't going to get off those tracks. So what, 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 what's the cartoon villain? He takes the woman he take, and ties him. And the man, the hero, ties him to the tracks. For the train to run him over. And you ain't going to get out of this. You will not get out of the way. Of this train coming. Only those that helped the Jews in the tribulation period. And they don't even know what they did, according to Matthew. I'm gonna i I'm gonna scatter I'm gonna separate the goats from the from the sheep nations. And the goats are going to be destroyed, and those that helped the Jews are gonna say, Because you were there, you gave me food, you, you visited me in prison, you take care of me when I was sick. And their response is, Lord, when do we do that? They don't even know. How's that for salvation? You're doing something and you don't even know what the reward is. <coughs> I know what I did to be saved. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ.
So there's coming a future event when natural light will be gone. Well, think about the world. What are they going to do at the beach when, the, when their sun god is gone? What are they going to do for Easter when the sunrise service never comes up no more? Imagine a bunch of Roman Catholics sitting at the beach waiting for the sun to come up and it never does. And here comes Jesus Christ. What's that? Mr. Priest, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I take my crucifix, throw it to the ground, get, get rid of get rid of all these stats, get rid of something's coming. Oh, it's coming. Come on, Mr. Religious Leader, tell us who that is. I don't know. Get out of my way as I hide myself in the sand. I that's God speaking. And I will punish. What do you tell a child? When they've done wrong, you're bound for a punishment. You're going to be punished. I will punish the world for their evil. Ah, there's justice. And the wicked for their iniquity. There's justice. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. There's judgment. <coughs> and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. God is the God of vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I, God speaking, will repay. You just keep doing right. You keep on doing what the Bible tells you to do. You keep on doing what you're supposed to. You do right. And no matter who does wrong, and God will be the rewarder to those of iniquity and to those who do right. I'm treated unfair at my job. Keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing and let God take care of it. My neighbor is an idiot to, to my family, but we're going to keep doing right and let God. Let God. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. There's going to be a shortage of men, especially Jewish men. See, there is a religious organization that's out there interested in eating and drinking the flesh of a Jewish man. Now, when the tribulation period comes, and that religious organization will go for a mass of Jewish men and their blood and their food, of uh, their bread. They don't need to do the hocus pocus and it becomes the, it will be literal body and blood. For Revelation says that that harlot drinks the blood of the saints. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. No, Ophir golden wedge must be very valuable. Man will be the commodity. Therefore, I, God, <coughs> will shake the heavens. Uh oh. Why is he got to shake the heavens for? Because NASA's got a bunch of junk up there. We're going to the moon. Why? So you can have a dump. We're going to go to Mars so you can throw some more junk. That's all a man does is throw, make garbage piles. Above our head on this earth is a bunch of junk just flying around. Space junk. The earth shall remove out of her place. Uh-oh. Mother Earth? Yes, Mother Earth. Mother Nature. God will have the extreme power over it and her. Peter says it's going to melt the elements of fervent heat. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, in the day of his fierce anger. It would be funny if God just moves the earth. I mean, maybe the sun doesn't go dark. Maybe he just moves the earth away from the sun. The earth is going to be moved. Oh, the earth is going to spin upside down. It may. And you may have nothing to do about it. 
and shall be as the chaste robe, as a sheep that no man taketh up alone. They shall every man turn to his own people <coughs> and flee everyone into his own land. Mass running, mass confusion. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Oh, death. Everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Revelation 13, death. death. There's one thing coming in, in the tribulation period. Death. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. What about the children? Death. Their houses shall be spoiled. I'm going to be packing my, my gun. They ain't going to stop it. And their wives ravage. I'll protect my family with my gun. Not what the Bible says you're not going to. Imagine death running in the tribulation period. Your houses are being broken into. And your family's being raped. Listen, World War II was just a prerequisite of what's going to yet come. Man is going to be fulfilled of his great desire. If I want it, I'm going to get it. That's what man's desire is. That's why the law says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's goods. Here you go, right here. I'll do whatever I can take to get what I want. And this happened when Babylon came into the, into the land. Man, they were taking babies. They were throwing them off cliffs. They were raping the women. They destroyed the city completely. Jeremiah, no, not Jeremiah. Nehemiah, when he came into the land, he's upon his ass. There's points where he... He couldn't go any further because of the destruction. <coughs> and it's yet going to happen. Behold, I will stir up the Medes. Uh-oh. In B.C. 713, which is the date Usher has Isaiah writing this, did you know that... Uh, the Medes were not in power to 536. The Bible was just written by man. You're telling me 200 years before a nation's even a nation, God tells you about a nation that's going to destroy you. And they're not even a nation. Babylon is not even in power yet. Never mind, the burden of Babylon started off this chapter. Now we're at the Medes. Two world powers are not, not even powers yet. Now can you imagine when this city Babylon is built and comes to power, can you imagine those who had the, book, the scroll of Isaiah? Uh-oh. And yet... They didn't take heed to the word of God like they do today. And Babylon came to power. And Judah and Jerusalem kept on sinning. <coughs> get them, get them. <coughs> vile and vile and vile and vile and vile. And they didn't listen to the scriptures. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. You're not going to give us money. You're not going to pay. We're going to come in with utter destruction. Don't offer me what, what you got. Don't give me spoil. Don't pay me. We want destruction. We're going to destroy Babylon. And they did. Their bowls also shall dash the young men to pieces. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of their womb. Pregnant women. Their eyes shall not spare children. Babies who are out of the womb. And you found this with Herod. You found this with uh, Pharaoh. 
Ooh, abortion in America. Abortion in America is written right here in Isaiah. Killing the womb of a woman that is, is, has fruit. And you're going to stop it? It's been going on for 2,700 years plus. That is what man does in his sin nature. He kills, and he'll kill all. For there is none good. There is none that seeketh after God. There is none righteous on the outside of, of God's mercy and grace and God's salvation. Man is out to kill man. The very first thing that happened of the fall of man, the next event was brother killed brother in a civil war. That's why God had to step in with his salvation, his way, his truth, his life. When you've got a religion that, that states to kill man, that's not God. That's the old nature. When you've got a religion that, that sets up an image and bungle drums, the high babies have been legitimately born because of sexual acts at the temple, and you've got to kill those babies, that is not God. That's the old nature of Satan. Because the very first murder back in Genesis 4 was a religious service of your fruits of the ground. And I don't like God accepting you, so bang you over the head with a rock. Now register your rocks. We're going to confiscate every rock so you don't kill everybody. Man in his best state is wicked. Kingdoms, the beauty and the charity's excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Revelation 18.8.19.1 what does that verse say? It's going to burn, baby, burn! Read Revelation 18, 1 through 9. When the sailors are there, alas, alas, that great city is burned and destroyed! Sodom and Gomorrah. All over again. And yet Christians will not read the Old Testament to see what's going to happen. I love the Bible. It is so great. It is so wonderful. It tells you what's going to happen. It tells you what has happened. <coughs> it shall never be inhabited. Babylon. It's a prophecy. It's inhabited today. So it's got to be yet future. They can stand and tell you right where the hanging Babylon, uh, hanging guardians of Babylon were. And there are people, there are U.S. soldiers over there today. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch their pitch tent there. So the Arabians are doing that. Neither shall the shepherds make their folds there. But. Wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, sorrowful, grief. Creatures are not happy. And owls shall dwell there, and satyrs, and that's that uh, half man, half goat. I got a note, Revelation 7 9 shall dance there. Zechariah 5, 9, Revelation 17, 5. Come on, you believe in satyrs? Half man, half goat? I don't know what a satyr is. I believe in it, though. A lot better than the junk you believe in that comes out of the, down Orlando. A lot better than the junk that you read in books coming out of some man's head. I'll believe the book that came off from the, from the heart of God. The one that said, let there be light, let there be trees, let there be monkeys, let there be whales. That God says there are satyrs. I believe God. Well, 
put my faith in the book. You haven't seen a star child. I haven't seen Jesus. I know I'm going to see Jesus. Whatever I see satires or not, I don't care. When this is spoken about, I'm going to be at the great. I'm going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. I'm going to be in glory. I'm going to watch Satan get cast out of heaven. Thank you very much. I don't care about satires. I will watch Michael and the angels and Satan and his angels. I will watch an international, global, heavenly war, and I will see Satan cast out of heaven. And when it says the multitudes rejoice in glory, I'll be in that band. Getting ready to suit up and get the horse that Jesus wants me to have as I get ready to come down with him. That's what I know. That's what I glory in. I'm supposed to worry about a half goat, half human in the earth? <laughs> cares. But I know it's so because God said it's so. How's that? You want to see some of the junk you believe in? Zombie apocalypse. Ah! Come on. There are people preparing and got shelters for zombies coming. No, Christians are coming. So I like how it says dance there. That's, that's an interesting little remark. They're going to dance. Do the hooky books and turn yourself around. <clears throat> and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolation, desolate houses. No human. And dragons. That's a plural. You believe in dragons? China does. They, they got the month or the year of the dragon. Go to a Chinese restaurant, you see pictures of dragons. <coughs> Why can't the Bible? That dragons is going to be of the dragon, Revelation 12. You know what the birds are in, in Mark chapter 4, the parable of the sower, don't you? And we saw owl. Ooh. Ooh. What's it all? In their pleasant places, a palace, excuse me. You mean where kings live, the animals are going to live. So I believe it's Proverbs says that in a king's palace, there's a little spider sitting there making a little web. And her time is near to come. Babylon. And her days shall not be prolonged. And then you go over to Revelation says she's going to be destroyed. Gone. Wiped out. What a chapter number 13 we have. 